We thank you, Father God. I thank you for this privilege, Lord Jesus, to stand before your people, to stand before you, Father God. Be glorified today. It's all about you. It's all about your will. It's all about your purpose. Be glorified this evening. Open spiritual eyes. Open spiritual ears. Open the eyes of our understanding. Father, we need to go to that next level. You're speaking to us this evening. You're reaching to us this evening. And Father, we're here expectant. We are ready, my Father and my God. We are ready to hear. We are ready to do. We are ready to believe. We are ready to move and step with your spirit. In the name of Jesus and through the power of your spirit, we say yes and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give a clap offering to the Lord Jesus. This conference is about him. Praise Jesus. Let's look at the book of Isaiah. The title of my message is Arise to the Next Dimension. Hallelujah. I can see Mama Kasha. Amen. Mama Kasha. Mighty woman of God. I stayed at her place when I went to preach in Alabama and she gave me healthy food. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She gave me healthy food, no? She gave you healthy food? She gave me healthy food. Is there another mic, perhaps? Yes, thank you. Uh, before I start, I'd also like to give honor to my friend, Pastor Grace Kapswara, all the way from Zimbabwe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Originally Mbongo. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to greet every one of you in the name of Jesus. You may be from Tanzania. You may be from Kenya. You may be from Sierra Leone. Wherever you're coming from, you may be from the States. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My name is Pastor Tina Mdobilu. My husband and I live in uh, Cyprus, in Houston, Texas. I'm the proud mother of six children, one girl, five boys, and one daughter-in-law. Hallelujah. My kids are 24, 22, 20, 18, 16, and 14. Amen. Praise God. So I'd like to encourage, if anyone here has only one child, you've got five more to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Arise to the next dimension. God is calling us this evening to rise to the next dimension. There is nothing as frustrating as having an employee who is in a comfort zone and won't move forward. God is calling us this evening to arise to the next dimension. Jesus is coming back soon. Hallelujah. When I was praying in my closet at home, I was asking God, what should I say? I had friends who had all kinds of things to say. And the Lord Jesus said, no matter where you stand, no matter what you say, wherever you are, prepare my people for the coming back of Jesus Christ. It's good to have parties. It's good to have conferences. It's good to have fashion shows. It's good to look good. It's good to enjoy yourself. But at the back, you need to remember, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Will he find you ready? <laughs> Hallelujah. And he's calling us here. Those who have the privilege to hear his name, those who've had the privilege to taste his goodness, we're the ones who are being sent out to tell the world that Jesus is coming back soon. 
You won't be able to do that until you arise. And this evening, we're going to look at four definitions of arise. You know, when I was thinking about the topic, when I was thinking about the word arise, I thought it just meant get up. But when I went into my dictionary, when I was looking at definitions of the word arise, I came to discover that the word arise means ascend. It means go up. It means go up higher from a place where you were sleeping, from a place where you were lying down, from a place where you were defeated. The word arise just doesn't mean get up. It means go up higher. There are certain things you won't be able to do unless you go up higher. Why? Because when you're higher, you have an advantage. You can see what other people cannot see. You can see what's behind the scenes. You are in a position of victory. That's why God is called God in the highest. And when he's calling you to arise, he wants you to come up to where he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know I'm, please forgive me, I'm sure I'm saying some stuff that's a little bit hard, but the times are perilous, the times are dangerous. I can sit here and tell you stories, I can sit here and whet your appetite, I can sit here and entertain you, I can stand here and tell you good stories, but Jesus is coming back soon. And I would rather hear him say, well done. Amen? I would rather hear him say, well done, than please people who are fickle. Huh? Today, here he comes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Tomorrow, crucify him. We want Barabbas. I would rather please him. Amen. It's going to get a bit lighter as we go on. Don't be afraid. It's good news from here. I'm not asking you to become a pastor. I'm not asking you to become an evangelist. I'm just asking you to prepare. Would you like to do what God is calling you to do? There's some of you God is calling to be businesswomen. There's some of you God is calling to be actresses. There's some of you God is calling to be fashion designers. Amen. But I would be unfair to you if I didn't tell you the truth. And you need to hear the truth. We need to remind each other that Jesus is coming back soon. Amen? Amen. And so today, the title of my topic is Arise to the Next Dimension. Why Arise to the Next Dimension? Because in the secular world, people are moving forward. Technology is increasing. All kinds of things are, are moving forward. Everything is advancing. The church needs to advance with the world. You won't reach anyone for Christ unless you are at a level that's higher than they are. Let me give you examples. I, I can just think of a few examples. Uh, let's, let's look at Moses. Let's look at Joshua. Let's look at Joseph. Let's look at David. Let's look at Esther. These are all people who were spiritual, but when you place them together with the secular world, they still came up on top. And that's why when Pharaoh saw Joseph, he said, where can we find a man like this one in whom is the wisdom and the spirit of the living God? That's where God wants to take the church. He wants you to be able to stand together with Bill Gates and have an answer for Bill Gates. You know, when I was thinking about Joseph, I came to discover that he wasn't given Egypt just because he interpreted a dream. He was given Egypt because he provided a solution. We need to be people who can provide a solution. Most of us are interpreting dreams. In order to go to the next dimension, you have to be the solution. Daniel was a solution. Joseph was a solution. These are people who were solutions. And the Bible says just before Jesus comes back, it's going to get darker 
and darker and they're going to need somebody who knows what to do. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go back to my topic and where is, please do this when I have 10 more minutes. You will do it. Thank you. Amen. Let's look at uh, Isaiah 52. I'm going to read verse 1 to 3. Awake, awake, O Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of splendor, O Jerusalem, the holy city. The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. Shake off your dust. Rise up. Or, in other translations of the Bible, arise. Sit enthroned, O Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For this is what the Lord says, you were sold for nothing, and without money you will be redeemed. You know, God has a plan for each and every one of us. In each and every one of us, there is a gift. In each and every one of us, there is a talent. Your gift is different from mine. Your talent is different from mine. I wish I could sing like Deborah. I wish I could sing like these women who were leading worship. But you don't want to hear me sing. Somebody told me today, oh, I like your voice. And I said, thank you, by faith. Hallelujah. Because when it comes to reaching the high notes, I can't. And one of the reasons why we all have different giftings is because God wants us to come together so that only he can be glorified. Only he can get the praise. And so that keeps me humble. Because even if I'm good at finances, you're good at management. Praise his name. You know, I was thinking of my husband recently. There's some of you who know my husband. My husband is very dynamic. And I am very laser fair. Amen. And God, you see, in the beginning, when I didn't have that much wisdom, I used to complain. I used to call him a bulldozer. Why is he always pushing me? By the time you're thinking, he's already over there. And I came to realize that if you pray, God will give you what you need, not what you want. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so God knew that I needed somebody to give me what I needed. And some of us don't recognize the men in our life. Some of us don't appreciate the men in our lives because we're looking them at them from here. When God can see them from here and God knows where he wants to take the both of you if you'll only cooperate. <laughs> Praise his name. And I remember, I think it was about last year sometime, I said, God, I'm willing to cooperate. And the Holy Spirit told me something I'll never forget. He, because I have a problem, even though I'm a pastor's wife, I have a problem in submitting. Amen. 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 I have a problem, you know, in submitting. But the Holy Spirit told me, Tina, I'm here also to help you to submit. Amen. He's not here just to help you to help meet your needs your physical needs, your financial needs. He's also there to help you to submit. He's, I remember there was a time uh, I needed to fast. God was asking me to fast. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to fast. But since I'm working and I get tired, I'm, uh, I'll give up food, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll be on liquids. And the Holy Spirit said, okay, that's fine. But I'd also like you to fast from gossip. <laughs> and I remember... I remember, because that's not what I expected to hear. I expected to hear, yes, my daughter. That is very good, my daughter. But the Holy Spirit is here to make sure that you make heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'd like to challenge you. You're not going to be effective. You're not going to go to the next dimension unless you go with the guide who's been there before. Hallelujah. If Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, how much more you? The Bible says that he's an intercessor. He, he intercedes for us. 
Because we are weak, he intercedes for us. Because we don't want to pray, he intercedes for us. Because our flesh is stronger than our spirit at times. The Holy Spirit. And so I came back to the Lord and I said, Lord, circumcise my tongue. Amen. Amen. And I know this is going to help somebody because I could sit here, I could stand here and pretend that everything is okay and I am Miss Holy, but I'm not going to help anyone. And so I'm here. I remember when my husband was called into the ministry. He's an engineer, a marine engineer. And after we'd been married for about four years in Dar es Salaam, he said, Tina, I'm being called into the ministry and I just thought I should let you know that God is asking me to quit my job at the Tanzania Port Authority and to be a minister. And I went back to the Lord. You know, it's really good to have an, uh, uh, um, a relationship with the Lord because you can tell him anything. I'd like to encourage somebody here. You can tell the Holy Spirit anything. Hallelujah. And I went to him and I said, Lord, you, you, must, you must help me. What am I going to tell the women? If I don't have it together myself. Hallelujah. Then I started reading the word to get into the word for myself. I used to read the word to just get an understanding. What did Joseph do? Where did Esther go? But I started to read it this time because I wanted it to speak to me. Praise God. And I've seen the Lord. I've seen the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Awake, awake, O Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of splendor, O Jerusalem. The holy city, the uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. This is amazing. This is a holy city. How did the uncircumcised and how did the defiled enter the holy city? This is why we preach Jesus and him crucified. Amen. You may be born again. You may love Jesus. You can belong to any denomination. It doesn't matter so long as Jesus is living in your heart. I know that we're different denominations, and we call those denominations by different names, and we go to different churches, but when we go to heaven, it's Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You may find yourself a, 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 a Sabbath day, with a next door to a Pentecostal in heaven. It's Jesus who makes the difference. And it's only Jesus who will help you get to that place. I'd like to tell you something this evening. That Jesus wants you to go to the next dimension. Even more than you want to go there. Because sometimes we're the ones who fight him. Because we lack that understanding. Because you don't know where he wants you to go. Because, and the Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. You see, Jesus is always looking at your future, but the devil is always telling you about now. Now, if we understand these things in the secular world, how much more in the spiritual world? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now we're looking at a few things. Put on your garments of splendor. Put on. God wants you to look good. He wants you to put on your garments. Which means that in the spiritual realm. You see in the physical realm you may look all good. But what about in the spiritual realm? What about in the spiritual realm? Hallelujah. Verse 2. Shake off your dust. Shake off your dust. There's some of us who've been on the floor for too long. As God was speaking to the Israelites, he told them, you've gone around this mountain for too long. And there are many reasons why we do these things. Sometimes we do these things because of fear. Sometimes we're comfort. We, we're in our comfort zone and we're comfortable where we are. Sometimes we lack an understanding. The Bible says, my people... Not outsiders. He's talking about his people perish for lack of knowledge. And this is what the Bible is saying this evening. Shake off your dust. Arise. Sit 
enthroned, O Jerusalem. God is talking to somebody this evening. We are royalty. There is no reason to be going through some of the things we're going through. There are certain things we're going through because we've been on the floor too long. There are certain things we're going through because we are asleep. Some of us are asleep. And when you're asleep, the enemy can do anything to you. It's interesting how the Bible in several books is talking about waking up. God is talking about waking up in the spiritual realm. You see, if you know who you are in Christ, if you know that you are royalty, there are certain things the enemy cannot do to you. I've been sick only twice since I came to America. Only twice. And I've been here almost four years, only twice. And if I hear something, I tell him, eh, eh. I know who I am. Amen. You could fool me before, but you can't fool me anymore. I remember back home in Tanzania, we were pastoring a church in a very poor area called Manzese, because that's where my husband was assigned to Manzese. And so... Uh, we, we sold my car, and I told pastor, I was working at the American embassy during that time, and I told my husband, okay, we can just use one car because I use the embassy vehicle to go here, there, and the other. So I can just take a bus after work because it's only one, one bus, but you need the car. And so I remember sometimes I'd get home, and I'd be so tired changing buses twice, Sometimes changing buses three times to make sure that, you know, I get a seat. And I get home and one of the children has a fever. But the child was okay in the morning. And so you get ready, you get the child ready, you look for a taxi because the child is sick. You go all the way to a major hospital that the American Embassy is paying for. And so when you get there, the taxi is waiting for you a couple of hours until you see the doctor. And then you can, this went on for a couple of weeks until I said no. So one day, the t one of the kids was sick, and I told my husband, you know what, I'm tired. And he told me I'm tired too. Because as a pastor, you're woken up at all times. Muslims, Christians, neighbors, they know that the pastor lives in that house. So you're woken at 1 o'clock, there's a crisis. You're woken at 2 o'clock, somebody's fighting. You're woken at 3 o'clock, someone's trying to commit suicide. And my husband was also tired, and I told him, listen, I'm going to sleep. I laid my hand on my son, and I said, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing. And my husband said, <laughs> He said, you've got a very hard heart. And I said, see you when I wake up because I realized that there was a pattern because when I kept on doing this I could not pray I didn't have time for the things of God and there's a demon called busy the devil may know that you love God the devil may know you won't commit adultery so he will keep you busy and I said no I laid hands on my son the next morning he was fine and that never happened to us again. Hallelujah. And God is calling someone this evening. Shake off your dust. You've been on the ground too long. How are you going to survive in the next dimension if you can't shake off your dust? How are you going to survive? I remember again in Tanzania, I went to school with the, the I'm a lawyer by profession and I graduated from law in 83, I was in the same class with our ambassador, Masilingi, for those of you who know him. Uh, who else? Mwakiembe, Kabudi, minister. Uh, we were in the same class. And I remember, uh, what was I going to say right now? I was talking about shaking off, shaking off, shaking off, shaking off. The enemy is a liar. But I graduated in 1983. And the minister for uh, the minister for finance, I was in college with him, and I remember going for an interview in a certain office. They, there was a very high position for a lawyer, 
uh, it was a government parastatal and the money was really good. So I went to the interview and I failed the interview for one reason, I only have uh, a degree, but they wanted someone with a master's. And I knew God was calling me for ministry, that's why I didn't bother. But I remember when I went to parliament one day, I ran into the minister of finance, and he said, Tina, how are you? And I said, fine, Mwishimiwa, because now they're honorable. And he said, well, how's life? And I said, I'm fine, sir. And I said, you know what? I went for an interview in this division of the Ministry of Finance, but I lost, uh, I didn't do well. And he said, why? He said, well, I don't have a master's and I'm not really sure what to do the master's in. And so, and he said, listen, if you want, I can give you that job. It's mine to give. And I told him, no. If I can't pass through the door on my own, how will I maintain that position? And there's some of us, God wants to give us a promotion. But how will you maintain when the enemy comes against you? Because for every new level, there's a new devil. You'll be fighting principalities. You'll be fighting things that you didn't know existed. Hallelujah. And I, I, th this was wisdom from God. I don't think... In the natural, I had that wisdom to say no. But God gave me that wisdom and I said, sir, no. If I can't do it on my own, I don't want that position. Because one day you'll be gone. Who will protect me there? I need to be able to maintain whatever God is doing for me. I need to be able to maintain where God is taking me. I need to be able to maintain it in my sleep. Hallelujah. And you know, God prepares you himself at times. Because if you read the Bible, God prepared Joseph. God, uh, first of all, God had to move Joseph from where he was. Because sometimes God will have to move you in order to shine. Why? Sometimes you're in circumstances that are not conducive. His brothers could not deal, could not handle a coat. If you're surrounded by people who cannot handle a coat, it's not wise sometimes to tell people what God is showing you. Hallelujah. Because they will kill you. I never understood, I, I, I never really believed that this story could be true until my last two children, Ona and Joshua. Joshua is the last born. They have civil, they have rivalry until today. There is something between those two. Because I think I've, I had each of them two years apart. There's something between Ona and Joshua. And I came to realize that what I read in the story of Joseph is very likely to happen. I keep rebuking Ona, I keep rebuking Joshua. Praise the name of Jesus. So sometimes. That's why I said we have to be sensitive to the things of the spirit. That's why Jesus teaches us to pray. Your will be done. Because sometimes you may be fighting your own promotion. And if you don't have eyes in the spiritual realm, how can God trust you? You see, there's a time the disciples asked Jesus. They said, you speak to us clearly. But why do you speak to those outside in riddles? Jesus said, because seeing, they do not see. And I don't waste seed. Why? Do you know in the natural, if you keep talking to some, I've met people. And you go, maybe you've been in school together, and you go, hi, and they look at you like, are you going to speak to them again? So why should God keep speaking when we're not listening? Jesus said, seeing they don't see, hearing they don't hear. God wants to take us to that next dimension, but are we ready? Because he's a father. And he's good and he's kind. He's not going to take you someplace where he knows you're going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Praise, the 
Praise his name. You know, I got married at 30, and I tell people, I got married at 30, and Lydia knows me. Mm. Uh, bumping and smoking and drinking. And then I got saved when I was 27. And then I got married at 30. And I remember my dad was really worried. My God, Mwanangu, you're 25. Oh my God, Mwanangu, you're 26. And I'm the only girl in the family. Hey, 28. At 29, my mom is asking, isn't there anyone out there? <laughs> huh? Hallelujah. And then I got married at 30, and I had Peter at 31. But the Holy Spirit told me, you weren't ready at 25. You were not ready at 27. You were not ready. God knows when we will be ready. So, in order to go to the next dimension, you need to prepare yourself. In order to go to that place where you need to go, where you have dreams to go, you need to prioritize certain things. There's a part that God is going to do, and there's a part that you need to do. We all have dreams, praise God. We all have dreams, and it's a good thing to have a dream. And as I said, uh, when you look at the story of Joseph, I love the story of Joseph because sometimes we're in circumstances where people don't understand us. As I said, the brothers of Joseph could not handle a dream. It took someone of royalty to understand the worth of Joseph. Because when Pharaoh, when Pharaoh was told that there is a dreamer, he said, bring him. And he understood the importance of a dream. And he gave him a position because of that dream. And some of you, if you want to go to the next dimension, hallelujah, tell God, let your will be done. Because sometimes he will move you himself. You may have to go to jail. Because when you go to jail and when bad things are happening to you, God is testing you. Is she ready? Hallelujah. Is she ready? He will test you on your integrity. He will test you on your giving. He will test you on your forgiveness. That's why I thank you, Vivian, for talking to me yesterday. We were talking about forgiving people who had wounded us, forgiving people who had hurt us. And she told me one way to do it is to do what Jesus is saying. Pray for that person. Pray until you cry. Because whereas you pray, the Holy Spirit will pour down his love into your heart and you'll begin to love that person. Amen. Hallelujah. We are tested. God, God wants you to go to that next level even more than you think. Why? Because it gives him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It gives him glory. That's why Jesus was so upset with the disciples. There was a time Jesus went onto the mountain and he was changed. And he went with Peter, James, and John and he was changed. And when he came down, the disciples were arguing among each other with this man who had brought a little boy who was demonized. And Jesus, when he came down up from the mountain, he asked them, well, what is wrong? And uh, the father of this little boy came to Jesus and said, well, my son is sick and I brought him to Jesus, but I brought him to your disciples, but they weren't able to heal him. And I would have expected Jesus to say, oh, Pauli, my disciples, but you're trying, so that is good. No, the Bible says he rebuked them. He said, you faithless, perverse generation how long will i put up with you the bible says that they went to him privately because they were ashamed and they said why couldn't we do it and he said because of lack of faith there are certain things that your employer expects from you there are certain things that society expects from you hallelujah Praise Jesus. Let's look at three different, how many more minutes? Okay. Let's look at another definition of arise. Let's look at the first definition of arise. To arise 
is to emerge, to come to light, to become clear, to manifest yourself, to become displayed, to be revealed. Hallelujah. So when God is calling you to arise, he wants you to emerge from the shadows. He wants you to come out. He wants you to be bold. He wants you to think outside the box. He, the Bible says in Proverbs 31, I can't remember which verse. It's talking about this woman, an uncommon woman. The Bible says she's like a ship that brings her goods from afar. If you're going to the next level, if you are going to arise, the Bible says you have to emerge. You have to emerge because the world is not going to allow you to emerge. God has gone before you, but you have to follow. You have to come out from where you've been hiding. I have a friend of mine who lives in Boston, and she's been employed by a girl from S Senegal. And this woman from Senegal has been, she's a very good cook, and she cooks for members of her community in Boston. But people were not buying her food. People would say, ah, for this, you're charging $3, but I can make it myself. Ah, this is what you're serving us, but we can make it better ourselves. You know what she did? She closed her shop and went into a white neighborhood. She opened her store. There is so much business. She hired my friend to man one store. And I remember I would talk to him because my friend and I pray together. My friend said, Tina, Tina, I've got to go. I'm so sorry. This is peak time. Hallelujah. You see, we need to be able to think outside the box. We need to be able to emerge out of the shadows. We need to be able to emerge out of our own communities. We may even need to emerge. Go to China and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Emerge. To arise is to emerge. To arise is to manifest yourself. Some of you have got skills. Do you know you've got something inside of you that somebody somewhere is willing to pay good money for? But when we tell you this thing is good, and if you want to know that this thing or this idea comes from God, usually it's going to take faith. That's why many of us will get an idea and think, mm, mm, I don't think so. And then somebody... Somebody will come with that idea and you'll think, you know what? Yeah, I thought of that before. It's happened to me so many times. <laughs> Until I was preaching somewhere, they told me to prepare a message. And I had to repent because I was preaching to myself and not just to other people. It gives God glory. That's why Jesus was so angry with the disciples because we ashamed our creator. We do not look like him. Actually, another definition of arise is to emerge with acts, to demonstrate yourself, to manifest yourself with acts or in appearance. You know, let me give you another example of back home. I was working at the American Embassy, and I remember that during a time of electrical shortage, the whole street would be dark. When my husband was an engineer, we lived in an area where Ameri diplomats were living. And when it was dark, uh, the, the, um, there was an American embassy house uh, two doors away. There would always be light there. We knew there were Americans by the way they talked. We knew there were Americans by the cars they drove. We knew they were Americans by the clothes they wore. We knew they were Americans because of the houses they lived in. And this is what it means to arise. God wants you to put on your garments of splendor. You need to reflect where God wants to take you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some of you who are on your way. Praise God. Let's look at another definition of arise. 
Another definition of arise is to get up or stand up from a position of sleeping, a position of lying down, a position of kneeling, or a position of sitting. As I said, when the Bible talks about sitting, it reflects somebody who's in a comfort zone. You're relaxed. Because a position for warfare, you're not sitting when you're fighting the devil. Okay? So when the Bible is talking about arising, you get up or you stand up from a position of lying down, from a position of kneeling. There's some of you who are good at praying, but you need to get up and do something about the prayers you're making. Yes. Hallelujah. It's time to leave the closet of prayer to go out and make a difference. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Let's look at another definition. Another definition of arise. This is one that blew my mind. To arise means to originate, to invent, to create, to conceive, to formulate. That is the definition of arise. For example, I'll give you an example in a, in, a, in a sentence. He arose to the occasion. Something arose in her when faced with the challenge. This is something that knew. Sometimes something can arise in you that you never knew that you had. Yes. Hallelujah. God is always doing a new thing. There's a new covenant. God is not afraid to do new things. Let's not be afraid. Sometimes people are afraid. And no, 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 no. It's always been done this way. If God is willing to change, we have a new covenant. There's a new Jerusalem. There's a new heaven and a new earth. There's a new Adam. Jesus is the new Adam. There's new wine. Be prepared. We prepare ourselves in the natural, but you have to prepare yourself here for the next dimension. Hallelujah. 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 You prepare yourself here for something new. Let's look at the second book of Kings 4, verse 1 to 4. I love this story. Second book of Kings, chapter 4. Verse 1 to 4. Hmm. Second book of Kings. This is a story that most of us know. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he loved the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slave. That's what we were talking about. You need to arise from prayer. This was a prophet, but his creditors were coming to take his children. There's a place for prayer. And there's a place for action. Now some people are only action and no prayer. It's not going to work. Because our enemy is spirit. Praise God. We have an enemy that's spirit. So that's where the prayer comes in. But this man apparently was only prayer. And he died in debt. And his Can you imagine you're a prophet and you're dying in debt? Couldn't you see this coming? May God help us. Because there's so many things that are fighting against us. And we're talking to believers. So this is a prophet. But he dies in debt. And his children are, being, are, are about to be taken as slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Let me ask you this evening, what do you have in your house? Amen. Amen. Do you know, let's, let's continue. What do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all except a little oil. How many of you know that a little oil is enough for the Holy Spirit? In fact, oil represents the Holy Spirit. Each one of us has a different anointing. Some of you are good at fashion. I... The wife of the current president, 
There are people who dress her. There are people who are paid for their fashion sense. And when God gives you a gifting in fashion, the Bible teaches us that those who were gifted in a sense of design were the ones who were commanded by God to design the, the clothes of the high priest. Never under, this woman said, I've got nothing. Perception. Ah, I've got nothing. I'm a widow. I've got nothing. Look at yourself again. Ask your friends. Ask your friends, what do you see in me? They will tell you, you're very kind. That kindness alone, that kind, her brother-in-law, her brother-in-law, Bishop Nwaka, uh, his wife was giving me a testimony. When they were young and starting in the ministry, uh, a prophet came from England, I think, and he prophesied over everyone. But when he went to Bishop Nwaka, he said, God is giving you the gift of hospitality. Bishop Nwaka's wife is a very good friend of mine. Hallelujah. And this is... Bishop Nwaka's sister-in-law, hallelujah. So his wife was telling me that her husband was so discouraged, a gift of hospitality. But do you know, years down the line, yeah, others were prophesied, you will do this, you will break this, you will go to the nations. He was told you will have a gift of hospitality. Do you know who he hosts in his house? Presidents of African nations. Presidents of African nations. The president of Zambia, I was told, goes in and out of their house. God says, my thoughts are higher than yours. My ways are higher than yours. When God gives an instruction, be ready. God says, you will always be on top and never below. You will be the head and not the tail. If God is telling you to do something, prepare for the ride. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he was faithful. He listened. He was willing to be humble. And that gift came into operation years after that when presidents of different African nations, there are places in Africa where he goes, 10,000 people show up to hear an instruction, to hear what is coming out of his mouth. And those presidents came because he was faithful to the calling of God. Never underestimate what God is telling you to do. Hallelujah. Praise his name. God wants us to manifest him because when you manifest him you will draw the pharaohs when you manifest him you will draw the nebuchadnezzars when you manifest him you will draw kings you will draw those in authority and they will come to god and they will be saved because jesus is coming back soon and he wants all those people to go with you to heaven hallelujah praise his name Let's go on. Accept a little oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Go around and ask your neighbors for empty jars. Now this is directed to those diehard walokoles like me who's afraid of somebody who is not the same religion. Your neighbor may be another religion. Your neighbor may be another color. The Bible doesn't say, because sometimes what you need may be in the hands of a non-believer. And non-believers don't have problems with that. It's only us. Amen. Hallelujah. It's only us. The Bible says, go, it's funny. You know when you read the Bible sometimes, I learned something here. Because we've been taught that debt is bad. We've been told that it's bad. This man died because, and, and left a debt to his wife. But now here comes the prophet and he's telling her, go and borrow again. <laughs> what does this mean? Before you go and borrow, ask God. Wait until the man of God tells you to borrow. Don't go kichwa, kichwa. 
Because if you're going to borrow, you haven't inquired of God. You see, in the Bible, people would fast for an instruction from God. These are the Daniels. These are the Davids who would not go to war until they'd received an instruction from God. Hallelujah. So it's okay to borrow if God gives you the okay. We are not under law. Hallelujah. If God is saying it's okay, it's okay. But otherwise, no. Amen. Hallelujah. So the prophet says, go and borrow vessels from your neighbors. Go and know. You may be able to lead that neighbor to Christ. Sometimes God is leading you to somebody so that they can see something in you for you to establish a relationship with that person. How is that person going to know about Christ if you hide yourself away? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And this is what Elisha is telling her. Don't ask for just a few. Uh, me, just give me. Uh, just give me $50, that's okay. You want to start a business and somebody wants to give you, say, oh, no, 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 no. Can I tell you something? My dad was a diplomat and we lived overseas for some time. Now, when we went back to Tanzania, Mikocheni, for those of you who know Mikocheni, was just opening up. The minister, this was back in the day, not today, but back in the day, ministers had authority. The minister for land was a friend of my mom. She went to school with my mom, and they offered my dad seven plots of land in Mikocheni. And my dad said, what am I going to do with all that land? Just give me one. Then we found, then Harbor's Authority were selling uh, plots of land in Masaki. Another exclusive area, Masaki. But you see, the problem is my parents had lived overseas for 19 years. So I think they didn't have an understanding of how things work back home. Harbors Authority were selling land, were selling houses, built houses in Masaki. And they offered my parents a house. And my mom said, ah, but water in Masaki is an issue. No, they gave it to my sister-in-law huge. My sister-in-law divided it, put up three stories. She's got a house ready built. And I just, you know, later on, I just said, oh my God. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Now God is saying, enlarge your territory. Enlarge your territory. Start thinking big. Donald Trump is not afraid to be, to think big. You think big. Praise God. God told Abraham, whatever you can see, I will give to you. Amen. Think big. Amen. Because by the time, you see, there's somebody somewhere who's ready to take that opportunity that you're passing up. I think I'm almost done. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's, we'll finish with this story. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside, shut the door behind you, and your sons. I believe that God is giving you common sense. Shut the door behind you. Not everything that you discover is for public knowledge. Shut the door behind you and your sons. God is offering a widow who's in debt a family business. When you leave here, who are you leaving that business to? Or is it just this little business? People are thinking big. They're thinking 30 years down the line. They're thinking 50 years down the line. God wants you to have something that you can leave to your children and your children's children and their children after that. Close the door behind you because there are haters out there. There are people who are willing to pull you back. Praise God. We're almost through. Then go inside, shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him, and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, 
She said to her son, bring another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. God is, listening, is, is waiting for you. It's not up to him. If you are ready, if you are a vessel that's available, he'll keep pouring. It's you. Because when the vessel stopped, the oil stopped. Had there been more vessels, God would have kept on pouring. You see, sometimes those limitations are in our mind. And when I was discussing this with my son, my oldest son, Peter, this is what Peter said. Peter said, Mom, this is also talking about ministry. Go into the streets and look for empty vessels. God is calling you to go out and, and look for people who don't have God in their lives. Pour your anointing into their lives and see if God will not give you supernatural provision. Hallelujah. Praise his name. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom and its righteousness and all these things shall be given unto you. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, church. Verse 7. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt. You and your sons can live on what is left. That is what God's plan and his purpose is. You see, the problem with most of us is that once we are caught up in the secular world, once we're caught up in business, we forget him. I commend this woman because she went to the man of God. God has no problem with you having houses. God told Israel, you're going into Canaan. You're going to live in, in houses that you did not build. God has no problem. He gave Solomon clothes. Esther was beautiful. He gave them things. What God wants is first place in your life. He wants you to enjoy life, but he also wants you to make heaven. That's why God told me, he said, wherever you preach, whatever you preach, remind people that Jesus is coming back soon. Praise God. So maybe there's somebody here this evening who doesn't have a relationship with Christ. Maybe you're here and you love God, but you don't have that close relationship with him. Where you're, If Jesus were to come here today, are you convinced that you would go to heaven? If the rapture were to happen here tonight, I have a brother, my younger brother, who's backslidden, and I told him, I said, Jesus is coming back. There's a rapture. And he said, don't worry, sister. When you go up, I'll grab onto one of your legs. <laughs> Paul, I'll grab onto... <laughs> Amen. If Jesus were to come here tonight... Or worse still, if you were to die, nobody's promised anything. But I know, I know, I know that I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to heaven because I'm better than anyone. I'm going to heaven because he is faithful. I'm going to heaven because I've made a covenant with him. So I'd like to ask anyone this evening, shame the devil. shame the devil. Don't be afraid. We're sisters here. Come forward and we can pray with you. Hallelujah. I would like to ask my brother to come and play worship song for about five minutes. Hallelujah. As we pray, if there's anyone who'd like to accept Christ into your life, if you want, you see, the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord, when God blesses you, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow to it. Okay, But there are other kinds of blessings that come with sorrows. There are other kinds of blessings that go with jail. There are other kinds of blessings that go with death. But if God is blessing you, he adds no sorrow to that blessing. And if it comes from God, he himself is bound to protect that blessing. If there's anyone who would like to accept Christ this evening, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you glory. Please raise up your hand if you'd like to accept Jesus. Or maybe you accepted him and something happened and you're no longer on speaking terms. God is offering you this, this, this opportunity to make it right with him. 
Lord, we worship you. And Lord, we thank you. If you would like prayer, just raise up your hand. Hallelujah. Please come forward. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Come forward. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. I'd like to ask the minister to come and pray. Minister Muguni, Minister Lulu. There's a word of knowledge from my sister. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Uh, the Holy Spirit has just inspired upon my heart that there are some people here. You do receive some ideas to arise in business, to start something, to raise your gift, uh, to develop your education. But there are barriers. It's like uh, the enemy comes and is still away even that, uh, that idea and there's, there's a fighting spirit. You just come forward that we pray with you. We break those barriers. We break those walls and that enemy who comes to steal to hinder you to move forward. This word has come. It's a timely word indeed. Come forward that you may receive your portion that we break that evil power which makes you not to arise. There are big ideas, big dreams. God wants to raise your, you in your gift, in your business, in your education. Come forward that you may receive your anointing to overcome and fulfill your dream. Hallelujah. I would just like to ask those who want to accept Christ, come forward. And those who want uh, prayer for businesses, you can stay there. And then I'm going to ask Pastor NC to pray for us and to break those barriers. Would you like to accept Christ? Oh, you've already accepted Christ? Fine. So you would like prayer for something else? Okay. Apart from business? Okay. So you stand over here and we'll pray together. Is there anyone else? Hallelujah. Minister Lulu? Minister Lulu, I will assign her to you. Okay. Is there anyone else who needs prayer for something else apart from business? Something else, okay? So could you please come and stand here? Hallelujah, hallelujah. And for those who are in business, just come this way a little bit. Yes? Uh, business and something else, okay. We will pray with you. And then as she prays and as she breaks those barriers, then we will also pray with you. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor Abihudi, please come forward so you can help us pray. I would like to ask ministers of God, Pastor Nunu Kone, please come. If there's a pastor's wife in here, please come so we can pray together. Mama Kasha, I'm asking the pastor's wives, please come forward so we can pray. We can pray for our sisters. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lydia. Amen. Please lead us in prayer. Okay, pray for general and then pray and break those things that hinder them. Amen. Can we raise our hands? I'm going to lead you into prayer of denying, denouncing, rejecting those oppositions, barriers, situations which you face, which hinders you not to break through to fulfill your vision. Then, after I lead you in prayer, we are going to pray with the ministers of the Lord. Say, Father God, I thank you. I appreciate you, Lord, for your word. <laughs> Father, forgive me for compromising with the voice of the enemy. Today, I receive your word. I refuse I denounce every demonic power, every negative idea, every barrier, every wall, every opposition which stands against my ideas, which stands against my dream. 
today in the name of Jesus. I refuse. I break their power. I denounce them in Jesus' name. Father, release your power and your anointing to deliver me. Crush the enemy in my mind, in my soul. Break the chains in my feet, in my heart, in the name of Jesus. Okay, release yourself as we are praying for you. The Holy Spirit is moving and delivering you. Women of God, we can lay hands on them to release the anointing just to set them free. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I take authority upon every stronghold, every barrier which is hindering this woman, this lady, to break through, to arise in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you spirit of fear, come out in the name of Jesus. You spirit of lack of confidence, come out in the name of Jesus. You spirit of failure, come out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit hindering their financial breakthrough, come out in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out, lose your heart, come out, come out in the name of Jesus. Every barrier, ancestral spirits. I break your power. Come out in the name of Jesus. Lose your hold. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of failure, every wall, and every barrier be broken. Every chain be broken in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.